Humans are creatures of habit. We like doing things the way we've been doing things for forever, and we don't like it to change. But when it is changed, that throws us off. That throws us off our game, that kills our vibe, that messes up our attitude, and we're like, whoa, 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 what's going on? And it seems as if that is exactly what's happening right now with the Kansas City Chiefs. Honey Badger, Tyra Matthew, he said that the Chiefs, they may be the most toxic or one of the most toxic fan bases in all the entire NFL. But why did he say that? It certainly couldn't come out of nowhere, could it? No, definitely not. Well, uh, the Chiefs, if I take you down memory lane, which is not <laughs> very long at all. Uh, the Chiefs, for a while, they had been an average team. They hadn't been great, but they hadn't been terrible. They had been average for a long time. They had some success. They got to the playoffs every now and then, but just it really wasn't anything serious over in Kansas City. But then they draft this guy, Patrick Mahomes. And once he starts, he has this amazing start. He comes on strong and like super strong. And the Chiefs become one of the best teams in the NFL like that. They have immediate success uh, under Patrick Mahomes. Um, and they go to three straight AFC championships. The first one, it should have been a Super Bowl, but NFL has some other plans that year. But they go to three straight AFC championship games. They go to two Super Bowls. They, they win one of the Super Bowls, but they, they are now so used to, over the past couple of years, they're they so used to not just basic success, but a lot, a whole lot of success. Regular season and postseason, they are used to reaching the highest of highs. So now, at this point of the season in week eight, when things ain't going so good, it throws a lot of people off. Because they're not used to losing more games than they've won. It's just a weird spot to be in for Chiefs fans. And it, it happens. And, and this is not necessarily a good problem to have, but it shows you what success can do. Success can spoil you, especially as a fan base. Uh, like, ask any New England Patriots fan. Like, these dudes going to Super Bowls, it felt like, for 20 straight years. And they were winning a lot of them. They lost some of them too now. But the, the Patriots were a great example of a team that had an amazing su amazing success, amazing continued success. Uh, and the fan base, they, they benefited from that. Now, at the same time, when you start losing, you don't have that success. When things change, since we don't like change, that can throw people off. And apparently it's definitely thrown a lot of Kansas City Chiefs fans off because... They're like, whoa, what's the, why are we struggling? What's going on? What's the problem? And then it trickles over to the players, too. So, um, arrowheadaddict.com. Uh, they made an article, and they put that article on Twitter. And they said, is Tyron still a lock for a contract extension from the Chiefs? And I looked at the article. They didn't disrespect Honey Badger at all. They didn't talk bad about him or anything, anything like that. Um, they did talk about how the Chiefs defense has definitely been struggling this season. They talked about how his only two picks, uh, they came in the Ravens game, unfortunately, against my Ravens. But, hey, we still got the win. But, anyway, um, his only two picks of the year came in that game. Uh, and that the defense as a whole has been bad. But he has not been one of the worst players on the defense. And they talked about how he actually, he you could tell that he really wants to turn this thing around. And how he's been very frustrated. Um, but he responded to that article on Twitter and he said, I'll always have a job. Despite the hate and criticism I receive, I'm going to always be good. So that's Tyron Matthew letting it be known like, hey, I'm straight. I'm going to always have work. I I I'm good regardless. I got this thing. I got it taken care of. And I mean, so far in the NFL, that has held true. Uh, he started with the Cardinals, played with the Texans. And a lot of times I forget completely about that. Uh, and then, of course, he's been with the Chiefs where they've had all the success. Um, and if the Chiefs decide to move on after this year, then he will certainly get picked up because he is a good player. He is. Um, and, and again, he feels that way. But right now, he it seems as if he may be alienating himself from Chiefs fans. And that's that puts the the team in a tough position 
when it's contract time. And, and you know that if, if the Chiefs started winning, then that would erase all of this. It would become a thing of the past. But when you actually let it be known like, hey, because it's one thing to, to think about something. It's one thing to think about something, but not actually say it. But when you say it and publicize it, hey, this may be one of the most toxic fan bases in the NFL. And once it's out there, it's out there. Once it's on the Internet, you could delete it. You could erase it. But once it's out there, it's out there and it's out there for good. But let's see where that came from. So Anthony Hitchens on Instagram. I didn't even get to see the post. I wonder if it was a post of a fan talking about the Chiefs. I didn't even get to see the original post. I only saw the comments. But Anthony Hitchens said, uh, all we did was go to three AFC championship games and two Super Bowls and one Super Bowl win in my first three years here so far. Y'all fans will never be satisfied. It's sad. And it is. It is because fans, they, not all fans are the same type of fans. There's some fans that they, 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 they leave it at football, which is great. They leave it at football. They don't make it personal. Yeah, if you get frustrated with how your team is playing, you vocalize, you talk about it or whatever, but you still keep it respectful. And in my opinion, that's how it should be. Hey, your team not doing so good. Are they struggling in these different areas? Okay, talk about it. Speak on it. Let your frustrations be known. But you never need to be disrespectful towards the players. You never need to be personal with them, anything like that, because football is business and it should remain business. So with Anthony Hitchens, I, I wouldn't be surprised if the original post came from somebody being disrespectful. But anyway, uh, Honey Badger, Tyron Matthew, he replied to that. And he said, big facts. This might be one of the most toxic fan bases. Oh, okay. And he didn't even say in all of the NFL. He didn't even say that. He said, this might be one of the most toxic fan bases in all of sports. And that's, oh, that's a pretty powerful statement. And if you weren't already an enemy uh, of those fans, then you're definitely going to create a lot more enemies by saying something like that. But again, what we always try to do here is look at both sides of the story. Because again, we know the, like if, if fans are frustrated, if fans are frustrated with how the Chiefs have been playing uh, this year so far, which is understandable, think about how the players feel. Think about how like they, they go out there. This is their jobs now. Their jobs are on public display literally every single week. People talk about their jobs and they, people talk about what these guys do right. But people talk about what these guys do wrong literally every single day. Every single day. Whether it's ESPN, NFL Network, FS1, sports or whatever. Whether it be on stuff like here on YouTube, social media, Instagram, Facebook. People talk about these guys' jobs every single... Like, think about that. Put yourself in their shoes for a minute and, and think about if somebody talked about your line of work literally every single day. Every single day. They talked about what you did. Every single day. They talked about what you did good. Oh, yeah, what you did good. And, and when, you, when your job is going nice, everything's great. Everything's peaches and cream, but they also talked about what you did bad. And if you've been struggling... At your job for a certain amount of time oh they highlight it all that's tough that that is something that that's very tough to deal with and it's it's not for everybody it's really not so i can understand the frustration on both sides but something that anthony hitchens touched on he said uh these boys will never understand talk big on the internet but want pics and autographs in person ha ha he ain't put the ha-ha in all caps, but he just did put ha-ha. Anyway, continuing. He said, me, my family, and kids, family that don't exist yet are set for life. Y'all keep trolling. Put y'all phones down and go get some money. By the way, y'all opinions don't matter. Now, a little bit of contradictions there. Um, so starting off, these boys will never understand. Talk big on the internet, but want pics and autographs in person. So that part, yeah, it does happen a lot because a lot, a lot of fans, like I said, they get disrespectful. Some fans, they get carried away and they cannot just keep it at football. Some people don't know how to do that. And even if some people do know how to do that, sometimes they still don't even do it. They get personal. They say, oh, this guy sucks. This guy's terrible. This is that. And no, 
They don't suck. These people don't suck. These are professional athletes. 1% make it. In 1% of people in the world make it in the NFL. But anyway, um, but then that part about him and his family, his kids' family, they, they, they set for life. Yes. That part we get. We, we know you got money. We know you got it. That's, that's an obvious right there. Uh, he said, y'all keep trolling. Put y'all phones down and go get some money. See, when it's like I, I, I've never really been a fan of that response. I can understand why people with money would say that because it's like, all right, let me try to think of something that these people that are talking about me don't have over me. And that's money. I, I, so it's like, uh, but I always feel like that response is just always so cringy. Say, oh, go get some money. Go get some money. That person could be they could be tweeting all this stuff at work. So they might be actually getting money. <laughs> but the last part, by the way. Y'all opinions don't matter. If that was the case, he wouldn't have even addressed it. Seriously. If all of these people's opinions really didn't matter, then he would have never even addressed any of this. Ever. So apparently those opinions, those people's opinions do matter uh, to Anthony Hitchens. And, and I can understand why. Because he's a Chiefs player. And yeah, he, he wants the Chiefs fan base to be in support of the team and support of different individual players and whatnot. He wants them all to be rocking with each other. So I can understand why the fans' opinions matter. Because, hey, when, when somebody who watches you, they watch you all your games that you play, they watch every play that you make, every play that you don't make, if they're not supporting you and they talk bad about you, you can be like, oh, man, like this is, this is bothering me. It really is. But now on the flip side, if, if it's somebody watches you, they watch every game that you play, they watch every play you make, every play you don't make, but they rocking with you and they support you, you can be like, oh man, okay, well this is great, oh cool, well, I appreciate it. But to say that their opinions don't matter after writing all of that, we know that you don't believe that. But um, it's, it's, just, it's just part of being spoiled, man. That's all it is. The, with the fan base, this whole thing between Anthony Hitchens and Tyron Matthew and, and the Kansas City Chiefs fans, it's just all about being spoiled. Again, the Chiefs, they have been winning. They've been winning big. Uh, and they again, the territory that they're in right now, even though 3-4 th and four is not the worst record in the world, it, it's much different than what they used to. It's not the worst record in the world. And it's not necessarily easy to bounce back from, but it's, it's bounce backable. Even though that's not even a real word, but it's a little term I just made up. But anyway, they can come back from this, but they just they 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 gotta ride through the storm, man. They gotta ride through the storm, and this goes to show you uh, the parity in the NFL, and even <laughs> with the Chiefs, like we ain't think parity was hitting them anytime soon because they contended uh, again past three years three three straight afc championships two super bowls and then even this year uh in free agency they still made moves they still re-signed this guy and that guy and it was like and they still they didn't even get everybody who they wanted to get and i'm like man where they get all this money from it, it, it was wild but um they uh they struggling and and, and again Fans just, they, they don't know how to take it. So as a player, it's, it's tough. You are in such a tough position. Because as the professional, fans, they're not professionals. There ain't no such thing as a professional fan. But as a player, you're the professional. So your expect is tough. Ooh, it's tough. It's tough. But you're expected to take the high road. And again, I can understand it's this very, very tough because I'm sure they got people going on the Instagram and stuff and commenting this and that and saying this and that about their play and all. And it's like, ah, if you see that, you log on, you get all these notifications and you see that it's like, ah, man, so frustrated. You want to talk back to all of them. You want to get on all of them. But with your job, like you, you did, you do know the environment you're getting in, in the NFL. Again, it's on public display. Like people know how much money you make. Uh, they again, everything, literally everything you do, is out there. So much analytics and numbers on this and that. So it's tough. It's very tough. So I just, I do feel for the players, and and I, I um, I just hope that I, I wish fans could be better. I really do. Again, I, I understand being that frustrated fan. I understand like. 
Like, I remember for my Ravens um, from 2008 to 2012. Boy, playoffs every year, one playoff win at least every single year, a couple of AFC championships, and then they end up winning the Super Bowl. Oof. Couldn't tell me nothing. Nothing. But then in 2013, we go 8-8 eight and eight and miss the playoffs. And I'm like, what? What's this? What life is this? Who? Missing a play? I'm not associated with playoff missers. It's not in my resume. What? Play? Huh? We not in the playoffs? And it obviously hasn't gotten to that point with the Chiefs. But... Being in that unfamiliar territory, it'll like throw you off. Like, whoa, what, what's going on? But again, it's never a reason for fans to ever get disrespectful. With Honey Badger, we know he's somebody that is very, very outspoken. So we know whatever's on his mind, he is going to let it be known. Whether it's in the heat of the moment, whether it's something that he's thought about, he's he going to let it be known. So, and he is not afraid to address anything via social media. If he sees somebody talking about him on social media and he catches wind of it, he's not afraid to call him out. He's not afraid to do the back and forth. He's not afraid to do that. Um, but this is just, it's tricky because like I said, it, it, it can alienate you from the, the fan base or whatever team. And those fans, no, those fans are not paying your bills, but... It can help. If you got more fans rallying for you, cheering for you, rocking with you, uh, then that can certainly help because the front office, they see all that stuff. And no, they don't re-sign and sign players just because of fans. No, not at all. It's all about what you do on the football field. But fans, they they can certainly help that a, li a little bit. A little bit. So we'll see what happens with these Kansas City Chiefs, man. Um... I just, uh, I, I'm, I'm sure while all this is going on, it's the whole, I know y'all been seeing the, the Jackson Mahomes and with, with Patrick Mahomes and Brittany Mahomes and, Pat, and and Jackson, they all at the dinner table. Look like they at like a Hawaiian place or something. I don't know where they are, but um, it's like, it's symbolic of this, this, this Chiefs players uh, versus the Chiefs fan base, man. It, it's like symbolic of Patrick just sitting there. He's sad. He looking frustrated. He looking down. He looking like, why, man? And then you see Jackson Mahomes doing all this stuff, man, and he and it's just like, oh boy, it's just the disconnect. There's a clear disconnect right now. Um, so we'll see if they can end up getting it turned around. And if not, then that disconnect is gonna get even bigger. Team Keep It Clean, I appreciate y'all. I love y'all. And like Honey Badger could be when it comes to the Kansas City Chiefs at the end of this season. We'll see. But I'm out. <laughs>